Hey, what's up? Gary here. Looking to get started using the new blend feature with the new Core OS 3.0.0 update on your Quad Cortex. Let's go check it out. So let's start the conversation on these new blend devices by introducing them and kind of walking you through just a brief description of each one. Okay. So we have two new blend devices as part of the new core OS 3.0.0 update. Uh, that's transparent blend and plug-in blend. Uh, these devices allow you to mix two different signals together into one and they, uh, they do this in a slightly different way. Okay. So they're very similar, but the approach of which they use to be able to blend uh, two different signals together into one are a little different. Okay, so plug-in blend is going to bring a fixed wet signal with static EQ and compression parameters already applied to the input that you are going to blend to your already existing input in your signal chain. Okay, wherein transparent blend is going to allow you to blend a completely unprocessed dry signal of an input or whatever uh, input parameter you've you've chosen doesn't have fixed EQ, doesn't have compression. You can flavor all of those things later if you like, but it doesn't come with any of those directly. Okay, so let's go take a look at building presets with both of these types of new devices, and I can show you the difference in how they kind of behave and what you can expect to to do to get started using them. Let's now take a look at the transparent blend device block, a new device for CoreOS 3.0.0. Um, really cool. I've had a lot of fun playing with this. I think you'll definitely find creative usages for it too. Uh, it's a welcome compliment. I've, I've experimented a little bit in the past with a similar concept of being able to do some of the things that transparent blend allows you to do. But um, in, this, in this context and scenario, this is the easiest, kind of most distilled way that I can demonstrate how to use this and then kind of get you to a point where you can go explore a lot of other ways to, to make this happen, okay? So let's walk through really quick this preset. I'll play a couple of riffs for you through and that way you can get a little bit better idea about how you can start leveraging this throughout uh, your workflow of creating presets. So first device we have is a pitch shifter. This pitch shifter is set to 12 semitone up. Okay, so it's going to go 12 plus semitone. And uh, it's a coarse pitch for where it is right now, okay? Mix 100%. Uh, so this is basically just dragged and dropped out here. I just simply hard set the semitone. Now, um, one thing you can do if you really want to kind of get creative with how these can sound as well, you can assign the uh, the pitch coarse here to a uh, expression pedal, be able to roll that up. The same applies eventually when we look at it for the actual transparent block itself. But um, at the moment, let's let's just leave this this hard set at 12 plus okay next we have a stereo analog delay i literally just dragged and dropped this onto the uh the preset and turned on ping pong that's the only thing i've done next we have utility transparent blend uh, you find this by uh going all the way down to utilities and then transparent blend is right here now you do have to be mindful of where you are placing this transparent blend okay this block and the reason is when you're blending, as the name entails, okay, you're going to blend two different signals together. In my case, for this example, I'm using input one, which is my guitar, okay, to, uh, to create the signal chain input to go through this entire row to the multi-out, all right? So my signal chain is input one through all these device blocks to out. When we use this utility transparent blend, I'm going to take the DI, the dry signal, of my guitar on input one and i'm going to blend that dry unprocessed signal in right here so it will continue to flow through the rest of this chain so that di signal that i'm going to blend in is going to skip right the di entry point of this input here to go through this pitch shifter and this delay and instead it's going to allow me to blend the signal of capturing all of this plus the DI from here, skipping these two blocks and mixing in here to then continue through the rest of the process of the signal chain, okay? So you can really think about this like side chaining. If you're not familiar with side chaining, I just made a video about that the other day, check the description below. You can check out what side chaining means so that way you can come back and have a, a more informed understanding about how 
these types of uh, sources work when it comes to blending because a number of devices now are allowing us to do this as a trigger, okay? But uh, at any rate, that's what we're gonna look at. So we're gonna take a look at that in a minute, but let me get through the rest of this uh, preset so that way you can see quickly. So next we have a uh, Bogna Vishnu 20th clean, no changes whatsoever on this. I literally dragged it from the, the standard amp presets. Uh, for the cab, I have a 112 US Deluxe Tween, just something simple, clean. And then finally, I have a shimmer reverb at the end again. No config changes whatsoever. I've literally taken this from the standard preset, dragged and dropped. That's it. Okay. So let's go ahead and check out what this tone sounds like. If I just play naturally, I have the transparent blend disabled right now. Okay. So this is just simply the signal chain raw format all the way down the device blockchains. There you go. So, kind of an interesting uh, little preset. Now, if we take transparent blend and we turn it on, okay, the first thing that I want to show you is the choices that you have. Okay, so you have blend and output. So, not much to really configure here, but blend is the mix blend. And this is a blend of your wet signal that has traversed these two device blocks from input one to reach this third device block for transparent blend, as well as whatever source you are selecting. And that is going to be the, the mix. In this case, I have it at 50%, okay? Which means you're gonna have 50% of your signal wet coming and traversing these blocks to this third block for the transparent blend. The other 50% is going to be blending in whatever input I select here for source, okay? And the point that I was making earlier is I want to bring in my DI, my dry direct input signal of input one and layer it on top of what's already been processed through this signal chain thus far to this third block, okay? So let me show you let me show you what happens first of all, if I go to 100%, if I set blend to 100% and I select input one here, I wanna show you what that sounds like with transparent blend. Okay, so, Obviously, that uh, that didn't really sound like it was pitch shifted like it did before, right? You didn't hear the warbles and, and everything else happening. And that's because setting the blend to 100% has now effectively skipped those two first device blocks, the pitch shifter and the analog uh, delay. Instead, we've just shunted our, our direct input from the very beginning of the signal chain into that third device block and then sent it forward through the amp cab and the shimmer reverb, okay? So that's why, uh, if you're, I'm sure there's reasons why you would want 100% blend potentially depending on the scenario, but at this point, there's not really a good usage for it because if I wanted to do that, I just wouldn't have those other two device blocks. I'd turn them off and I'd simply pass my signal through there, right? Well, let's take a look. Uh, yeah. Sorry, my mouse is being a little sensitive. I'm just gonna type that in. Let's, let's take the 50-50 blend, okay? That way you can hear uh, a 50-50 blend of that signal being processed from input, going through the pitch shifter, going through the uh, delay, and then hitting the transparent blend, and 50% of the direct DI from input one skipping those first two blocks and mixed in for the rest of the signal chain ride. <laughs> Did you hear that? Did you hear how there's there's more definition? You have a little bit more clarity on the notes that are being played while still having all of the backing of those pitch shifted, you know, semitone differences, the little bit of delay that kind of adds a lot of color 
to that uh, that sound. And then finally blending that all together through the amp and then getting that shimmer effect at the end. It's a very, very neat way to be able to uh, to blend signals together. And I, I definitely think that this is a... Uh, this is a this is a really neat thing that's opened up a lot of doors for me to go play around with with uh, a little bit more advanced presets. So uh, yeah, this is this is getting started with transparent blend. Next, we're going to take a look at the plug-in blend device block. Now, this is incredibly similar to the transparent blend, okay? Except that the signal that it's going to bring into mix is a wet signal. It's a fixed wet signal with a fixed EQ and compressor, okay? So uh, there's, there's going to be a bit of a difference in that sound, but it's still going to be the same kind of concept where you're blending or mixing two different sources together. And in this case, for my, my example, I'm going to be very similarly using the, the preset that I, I introduced previously for a transparent blend, except for I've taken the device block and I've moved it to after the cab. Okay, because this is where I want to insert my uh, DI that I want to blend into my wet signal. And, uh, and I'm going to use the 50% mark to kind of like demonstrate kind of how that, uh, that works as kind of the sweet spot. And you're going to see, spoiler alert, you're going to see it basically sounding the same as, as the other kind of blend in this mode. But there is a difference, and you're going to hear that when, uh, when we go to, to both 0 and 100 to also demonstrate what that blend sounds like. So I've made no changes whatsoever to anything else in this preset from the, the previous description of the transparent blend device block. I've just simply taken the plug-in blend and dropped it in after the cab, bumping all the rest of the device blocks forward to where transparent blend used to be on the third block. Okay, so for continuity's sake, I will play this riff with trans with the, I'm sorry, with the plug-in blend <laughs> uh, off entirely. And let's, let's go ahead and see what that sounds like. Okay, so that's with it turned off entirely. Now let's go ahead and turn the blend on and we're gonna play it at 50%. I want you to actually hear the, the blending of the wet and dry signal with that fixed EQ compressor. Okay, so it's a 50-50 wet-dry signal. Now, we're going to go ahead and go to the extremes on the blend, so that way you can really hear kind of what you're going to be expecting, okay? So let's go all the way to 100% for the blend. As you can tell, that was the DI. So that was the full DI of my guitar with no wet blend because we blended 100% of the DI over top of it, right? So the only effect that you were hearing was post the plug-in blend, which is that shimmer. And that's the only other thing you were hearing besides just my straight DI, no amp, no cab, not the pitch shifter, not the, uh, the delay or anything, okay? And now just for continuity's sake, we're going to take this all the way down to zero which should in turn act just like we're doing no blending whatsoever, which would be the equivalent of turning this device block off. But just for continuity, I wanna show you what that sounds like too. There you go, that's an introduction to the plug-in blend. There you have it, introduction to blending for the Quad Cortex in the new CoreOS 3.0.0 update. Super happy with this one. I think it's a subtle yet really versatile effect, uh, especially to cut through some of the clutter and the, the mud almost in, in some tones, especially if you're playing more ambient music. It's a great way to be able to have your notes kind of stand out with all the chaos of other types of modulation and reverbs and, and other things kind of happening there. And uh, I'm all for it. And I, I think it's definitely an interesting one, especially with the idea of being able to blend it with uh, which with pitch shifting. I think that's something that uh, 
it's just unique. It's something different. Uh, I, I'm having a great time playing with some ambient tones with this too. I hope that this helped you to kind of get to a point where you understand how to do this and can start playing with it on your own. Uh, comments section below, let me know how you're using this feature. Let me know uh, what kind of presets you're doing. Heck, share them to me on the, uh, the cloud. I would love to be able to download and try out a couple of those. And as always, I hope you found this informative. I will see you in the next one.